Hi, everybody. Welcome to Divine Conversations. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Eric. It's very, very nice to meet you. Although many of you are not new at all. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, so, it's a peaceful morning. And I have been doing my thing, my normal thing. I made a pot of coffee. I went out into the backyard with the cats and sat in nature for a while. And I started to think, well, thoughts came up, right? It's my, day, my daily meditative time, my moment with spirit, if you will, yeah? And I do take quite a few of these throughout the day. Um, I am blessed to live in a space right now uh, where I am deeply connected with nature, which is something that I had been manifesting for a long time, and so I'm very grateful to be in that space now. Um, and that space is in Puerto Rico. Uh, and as I've been taking the conscious time lately to really be in this space and accomplish the things that I set out to accomplish when I moved here, uh, the work is starting. And these things that I set out to accomplish were all in the, are all in the realm of self-discovery. And it took me a while to get here or at least to get to this place where I am doing this work now. I've been living in Puerto Rico for a year so far, a little over a year. And the first year was me being distracted, I will say. I got distracted by the community. I got distracted by the environment um, it was a new, it's a new place for me. It's a new country. I wanted to experience the people. I wanted to experience the culture. I wanted to, I put a lot of pressure on myself to learn Spanish. Um, but basically I got distracted for a whole year. And now we're at we're past that and many things have happened that have been slaps in the face you will big wake-up calls we could say and now I'm finally in this place where I'm turning my attention towards introspection and that is exactly what is needed at this time for those of you that have been following me for long enough You've heard me say this over and over and over and over and over again lately, ever since we started approaching, like really approaching this past Lionsgate portal that happened back in August of 2021. I mean, it happens every year, but this last Lionsgate portal was, at least for me, it was a doozy because like I said, I'm really starting to do this introspection work now. And something that you've been hearing me say on the channel over and over again has been a call for sovereignty. A call for sovereignty and a call for knowing thyself. Getting to know yourself, getting to know who it is you truly are underneath the mask, underneath the conditioning, underneath the indoctrination, underneath the moral values, the morality, underneath the responsibilities, underneath the obligations, underneath the three-dimensional circumstances. Who are you really? And that's what we need at this time. 
this time period is calling for us to know ourselves inside and out. So in the topic of getting to know ourselves today, I want to talk about something something that I've struggled with my whole life. And I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'm not the only one, right? So I was sitting this morning and I was doing my thing and I was meditating and I was connecting with nature and I was connecting with myself and, you know, just going through the motions. And one of the things I started to realize is, I wonder if I've missed the boat. What do you mean by that, Eric? Well, I mean it in a figurative uh, sense, a figurative sense. Have I missed the boat? Have I missed the opportunity? That's something that I find myself coming up against a lot, over and over and over again. I go out for something, I try for something, I work towards something, I see all the success that could come of it, the potential. I feel the excitement, I feel the enthusiasm, I go for it. And then something gets in the way. What I wanna say is, my morals get in the way. Now that's an interesting thing to say, isn't it? My morals get in the way. And many people would turn around and look at you or look at someone that says that and says, well, you're better off to have strong morals. That is true. Morality is... What is morality? I don't know. And what's causing me to question that is this. This question that I want you to ask yourself. If you feel like you've missed the boat somehow, Ask yourself, well, why? What did I do? What have I done? What have I not done that has caused me to miss the boat? And if you can look at certain things and if you can look at certain situation, point out, well, I did this in that situation and that kind of caused this, that, and the third, okay. What's causing me to question morals in this situation is how good are morals or certain belief systems or certain stances, certain ways of identifying yourself, certain opinions that you hold? How good are they if they stand in the way of your true nature? How good are they if they stand in the way of who you truly are? How many times have you said to yourself, I know I can do that. I know I can be a part of that. And then you try, but then you stop yourself short of really doing it fully how you would do it because of morals, because of judgment, because of people's opinions. because of how you would look, because of how people would perceive you. And you know what's funny? What Spirit is saying to me at this point now is what they just showed, what Spirit just showed me was those things that are really deep within you that are almost like a call to action those things that drive you to go for a certain way, thing, go for a certain experience, go for a certain outcome, stand in a certain way, speak in a certain way, stand up for certain things, believe in certain things, you, you, what, what drives your passion, what, what drives your inspiration, but then turn around and is called taboo <laughs> by, the, by society, by the collective. 
if you were to just express those things as they truly are within yourself, imagine what would come of it or what could come of it other than ridicule, jealousy, judgment. I guess what I'm trying to say is how have you stopped yourself short from fully expressing who you are because of what other people would say? How many times have you missed out on an opportunity that you that felt so right, that you felt like you just, everything within you screams, yes, I want to do this. Yes, I want to go in this direction. Yes, I want to experience this. And then you stop yourself short because of, what would people say? Kind of going through this energy a little bit right now, myself. Looking back, thinking back on all the ways that I censored myself. All the ways that I stopped myself short from doing something the way I felt I naturally wanted to do it just because of what people would say. Because I didn't want to be looked at as a fraud. Because I didn't want to look at, be looked at as an imposter. Because I didn't want to be, because I wanted to be taken seriously. There it is. Because I wanted to be taken seriously. How many of us have these complexes built up from childhood of people being overly practical, overly cynical and completely dismissing the magic, the wonder within you, within life, within all of creation it's very misery loves company energy, isn't it? and there's another thing that's going around in the collective currently in society currently that's becoming seen more and more and more well and that's the belief that well I suffered and look at how I grew out of it look at who I am now so you should should you should suffer too it's good for you how does that make sense you guys not to diminish anyone that has suffered I'm sorry that's happened to you I wish we could take that away from you. I wish you didn't have to suffer. But why would you want to perpetuate that for someone else? This might be a little bit of a tangent, but this is something that I always thought of. Always believed when I was a kid growing up. I've heard all, I would always hear so many stories from elders or adults saying, well, this, that, and the third happened to me, or this happened in my life, this, that, and everything like that. And then they turn around and then because that happened to them, turn around and perpetuate it themselves. But I'm pretty sure I was just listening to you tell me how terrible that was, how hurt you were, how awful a time in your life that was, and now you're suggesting I do it, or now you're creating a situation where that type of energy is being perpetuated. How does that make sense? Ask yourself this question. How many times have you lost your sense of self just to please others? How many times have you let go of your spark of creativity, your spark of passion because of, gosh, what would people say? It kills us. It takes away our spark. It dims our shine. And this is a time where we need the exact opposite of that. We need to shine. We need to let ourselves just be. Show who it is that you are. Don't be afraid of that. God made you just the way you're supposed to be. No holds barred.
Spirit's pushing me to pull some cards. Um, I've been doing a thing lately where I've been just channeling. And I've been doing that lately and it's been really nice. Uh, but I'm a card reader. I'm a channeler. I read cards. I read tarot cards. I read oracle cards. And I've been allowing my channeling abilities to just do their thing, right? But before I sat down to record this video, <clears throat> Spirit asked me, guided me to grab a deck of cards. And they said to me, we want you to do this channeling, but then we also want you to pull some cards too at the end. Okay. I was getting a little resistant though. Spirit's really pushing me to pull some cards here. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm doing right now. We have one card so far. It's the Hermit. And the first thing I hear when the Hermit comes out is know that, know thyself. Or what I was just saying was know that self, right? Know yourself. Understand who it is that you are. Understand what it is you bring to the table. Understand what it is you have to contribute to society. Just because some sort of mainstream perspective looks at you and says there's no value in that, how do you know? Not even, I don't even want to ask you. I want to ask that person that tells you that your value is not enough or not good enough or not worth anything. How does that person know? What makes that person the authority? What, because they studied at some high-end university and got some, and, and, and got some ridiculously expensive or, or exclusive form of accreditation or something like that? Who's creating, generating the qualifications there? Who knows more about existence than God's source creator, the one source of all existence? And because of that, who gives them the right to tell you that a God-given inspiration within you is not valued, is not valuable? Who, how do they know that what you have to give, what you have to express, won't touch the hearts of others around them, around you, won't have some sort of meaning to the people around you? Do you see how darkness or, hmm, not necessarily darkness, but do you see how parasitic and evil and self-serving entities twist the true nature of you so that your light doesn't shine? Twist work, they, how they work to twist that perception of yourself so that you get out of alignment with who you truly are or what it is you truly want to be or need to be or came here to be doing. And thus that light doesn't shine. That is the spiritual warfare that's going on here, guys. And the only way to win is to know yourself, to find your light within and to allow that to shine. Let's see. Yep. I was going to say anything else. Yes. Now we have the Empress. The Empress is unconditionally loving. Sometimes the Empress can have a bad reputation. Sometimes, because she's just so unconditionally loving that she's fairly enabling. But what Spirit is saying here with the Empress and the Hermit, these are two major arcana cards, okay, you guys? So this is a big deal. This is big time spiritual energy. But the, you know, this is the universe coming through saying, we love you just as you are, just as you were created. There is enough space for you. There is enough abundance for you. There is enough of everything for you so that you can thrive just like everyone else. You were created as you were created to be who you are. Unadulterated. Unabashed. Unwatered down and definitely not dimmed in any way. The Empress is representing the unconditional love of creator, of source, 
saying no matter how you appear, no matter how you show up, no matter what your gifts and talents are, however weird and quirky and out of the ordinary someone may label it, you are still loved for exactly who you are and exactly what it is you came here to do. Let's see, anything else, please, Spirit, that you want to say? Interesting. Okay. Knight of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck now. And what we have coming out here so far is the Wheel of Fortune, the Three of Swords, and the Four of Swords. Things can change, you guys. Things will change. If you allow yourself the time to sit with what it is that's hurt you, Three of Swords, and to understand it, Four of Swords, maybe even to make peace with it. You have to make a conscious decision in how you want to deal with these types of energies or these types of circumstances. Am I either going to keep myself on the karmic hamster wheel, wheel of fortune, and keep perpetuating or keep flowing, flowing with the pain? Or am I going to take a step back, notice it, see it for what it truly is, and then move forward and consciously pull myself off the wheel? The choice is yours. It doesn't take long, though. I'm sorry. It, it's go it, 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 well, it doesn't take long to figure it out. But also, the healing process is a slow one. It's a steady one. It has to be a conscious one. Step by step. Moment by moment. Okay? You know what's interesting? I'm sitting here channeling this message... And as I'm doing so, I'm recognizing all the bloodsuckers that are swarming around me. These are parasitic situations, you guys. One of them is landing on my phone. Parasitic. And they're parasitic in the sense that they feed off of your pain. They feed off of your turmoil. They feed off of your strife. And yes, a lot of being here in this world right now is about learning through the contrast. And contrast comes from strife. Differences. Going through rough situations and rough circumstances. But it doesn't have to be any more than that moment but we keep ruminating over it and keep us in I keep ourselves in these cycles you guys this isn't necessarily easy but we can pull ourselves out of it we just have to make a conscious decision to do it and stick with it not fall prey to the same circumstances not fall prey to the same judgment Allow yourself to be, allow yourself to breathe, allow yourself to heal, allow yourself to flow. Closing message. Interesting. Closing message, please, Spirit. We're going to leave it here. <laughs> we have the Hierophant. Now, those of you that know me as a reader, you know how I feel about the Hierophant and what he represents. And it's kind of perfect. 
it's kind of perfect because this is what we're talking about here. These are the energies that we're talking about. These are the energies that confine you, that constrain you, that force you or demand that you fit into a box. That you do things to make everybody happy instead of doing what's just really right for you. Be a good little boy or a good little girl. The path is already laid out for you. You don't have to blaze a new trail. You don't have to do anything new. You don't have to do anything extra. It's all right there. Just do this. Follow what we say. Get in line. Stay in order. But ultimately, you do have a choice. And at this moment in time, collectively, we're coming to the realization that what we actually want doesn't come from this, doesn't come from societal structure, doesn't come from what those on top tell us. What we truly desire comes from following our hearts, the Knight of Cups, to judgment. Okay, we're being called to follow our hearts. What is deeply within your heart? Ace of Cups, have the strength to love yourself unconditionally, like this Empress energy does. Yeah? But finally, what has come out here is the King of Wands, I'm sorry, the Three of Wands, upright, to the King of Wands in reverse, the King of Swords upright, and death. And this King of Wands in reverse energy is representing this guy. The false leader, the false guidance system, the system that tries to control you and will only reward you or will only give you what you need when you appease, when you follow their rules, when you do things the way they want you to, instead of doing what's really right for you. Where am I going on my path? What is it that I've been doing on my path? How many opportunities have I missed out on because I wasn't truly fully myself? Because I allowed myself to be dimmed because, gosh, what would people say? The truth of my light was stripped of its potency because, gosh, what would people say? Well, this is us saying no more to this false light, to this false leader, King of Wands in reverse, an individual that's really just looking out for their own gain. And thus we have a transformation. Duh. This isn't an easy one, you guys. This feels like it's a transformation that's pretty sorrowful. Because it's a transformation or it's an awareness that's leading to an, a transformation that's coming from recognizing what it is you feel like you've missed out on. But a piece of reassurance here. The truth of the matter is, you haven't really missed out on anything. Because ultimately, what's really meant for you will come. But all of this has just been a process of you getting down to who it is you truly are, what it is you truly want, the resonance of what your inner light shines at. All of this was just maybe a roundabout way 
to get you to love yourself, to get you to understand what it is you truly are, how it is you truly feel, what it is you really truly want, how it is you want to carry yourself, how it is you want to identify who it is you truly are beneath the surface, beneath the conditioning. The truth is, you haven't really missed out on anything. This was all just preparing you for what's to come and where it is you're really truly supposed to be. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs>